Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception of the Hamilton Fertility Center in London. And today I'm going to talk about a topic which I've spoken before, but I think it's time to revisit it again. And the answer is, do all embryos that do not reach a blastocyst stage genetically abnormal? Which means that on day six, if you have a marula, is it genetically abnormal? And this is what we have often told patients. We've told patients that if your embryo doesn't reach a blastocyst stage, then it's likely that it is abnormal. And how true is that logic? And that statement is what these doctors set out to prove. And it's a rational of embryo biopsy on day six. So what we know, we know that embryo morphology grow relates with aneuploidy. And we know blastocysts have a lower aneuploidy rate than cleavage straight and marula embryos. And we also know that expanded blastocyst has a lower aneuploidy rate compared to early blastocyst. But we just don't know the implantation potential of day six embryos. And if you do pregenetic screening and aneuploidy, which is PGTA, on blastocyst and embryos not reaching blastocysts, which are generally discarded. So what was done here? And then embryos were cryopreserved after biopsy and a frozen embryo transfer was done with estrogen and intramuscular progesterone. Time-lapse technology used and majority of biopsies were at a blastocyst stage and or a compacted marula stage. So if you have a look at the results, the aneuploidy rate in a compacted marula was 88.1%, cavitating marula was 77.5% and the blastocyst was 57%. 0.4%, clearly indicating that what doesn't turn into a blastocyst by day six, a larger proportion are genetically abnormal. But I have a look at the age groups. And if you see, if you're younger, then your aneuploidy rate in blastocyst still continues to, to be the lowest at about 40%. And with compacting marulize, it's 57% and and uh, and, uh, or rather cavitating and compact in modulars, it's about 68%. As you get older, and you clearly see at 35 to 37, you see compact in modulars is 75% are abnormal, while 66% of cavitating modulars are abnormal, and blastocyst is about 50.8%. And by the age of 38 and 39, 88.9% of compacting modulars are abnormal, 81% of Cavitating morulas are abnormal and 56% of blastocysts are abnormal. You get to 40 and 40 plus and I think if you don't reach a blastocyst stage and almost 98% to 91% are abnormal in the morula group. But remember, almost 78% of blastocysts also are abnormal. But further on, what happens if you replace a blastocyst in a frozen cycle and what happens if you replace a euploid marula in a frozen cycle. And a euploid marula gives you about a 23% live birth rate, while a blastocyst gives you a 55% live birth rate. And that is very interesting, which means it is not that euploidy is the only classification. One, because to a large extent, you need components which are further away for implantation, and that's not just aneuploidy. And euploidy of a morula doesn't just tell us, it, it, it tells us a few things that implantation rates are certainly much lower. So what did the study tell us? That morulas have a higher aneuploidy rate. The blastocyst biopsies are easier and morula biopsies are far more difficult. And sometimes it's better to wait till they start cavitating. And over the age of 40, the chances of even a marula coming normal are extremely low. So this again starts questioning the uh, logic that we go through. And what we essentially go through is saying, well, are all embryos that don't reach blastocysts in the laboratory abnormal? I will say, well, if you are younger, then probably a small percentage are going to be normal and still don't turn into blastocysts in the laboratory. And that again begins to question the entire concept of saying is just aneuploidy or euploidy the sole criteria of implantation. 
And the answer is no. I, and you look at it and you see the cytoplasm is entirely of a, a fertilized egg is entirely maternal while the nucleus is paternal and maternal. So a woman contributes almost entirely to cytoplasmic elements and there is an aging process that goes on. And so, the, the comp so as a woman ages, there's no doubt that the cytoplasmic abnormalities tend to increase and mitochondrial abnormalities tend to increase. And maybe, and that is one of the reasons why the implantation potential could be worse. But this is a paper worth having a think about. Thank you.